man. So, LeBron James and Charles Barkley has the internet in flames right now. Well, sports internet, they're, they're going crazy. They're going crazy because LeBron sent out some encouraging words for Caitlin, and then Charles Barkley followed that up last night during the halftime of the Mavs and Timberwolves playoff game. He said some things. So, first, let me let y'all hear what LeBron had to say about Caitlin. The one thing that I love that she's bringing to her sport, more people want to watch. More people want to tune in. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it fucked up. Caitlin Clark is the reason why a lot of great things is going to happen for the WNBA. Um, but for her individually, I don't think she should get involved on nothing that's being said. Just go have fun, enjoy, you know, but I, I, I'm rooting for Caitlin because I've been in that seat before. I've walked that road before. I hope they, I hope she kills. I hope Aaliyah Boston does amazing. You know, I hope they do great. You know, I'm just kind of in this mode right now because I'm getting the same you know, thing from watching my son, who's a 19 year old, kind of getting a lot of animosity and hatred towards him when he's just a kid trying to live out his dream. You know, there's a very small number of men and women that actually get to live out their dream of playing the professional sport. And we have grown ass men and women out here doing whatever they can to try to make sure that does not happen. That is the weirdest thing in the world, but it is what it is. And I'm glad that Caitlyn has a great head on her shoulder. I ain't gonna lie, it didn't sound that bad, bro. But if you are someone that's trying to sift through content, trying to make people pick a side, whether they're on your side or whatever narrative you're trying to push, either you're gonna like what he said or hate what he said. But that's how people move on social media nowadays. Now, Charles Barkley then followed that up with saying this right here last night. You women out there, y'all petty, man. Hey, LeBron, you 100% right on these girls hating on Caitlin Clark. Y'all petty, girls. I expect men to be petty because we're the most insecure group in the world. Oh, you are. Y'all should be thanking that girl for getting y'all ass private charters, all the money and visibility she bring into the WNBA. Don't be petty like dudes. Listen, what she's accomplished, give her her flowers. Stop being petty, all you women out there. She got y'all ass charters. She bringing all y'all this money to the table, but y'all being petty like dudes. LeBron, you are 100% right. Y'all girls, stop being petty. Kayla Clark, thank you for bringing all that money and shine to the WNBA. Well, they're going to hate you even more now. Hey, they, listen, they can't do anything to me. They're going to hate you, though. Hey, they can't, they can hate on me, but they better be. But that mailman better be in my damn house the first and the 15th for another, for another year. For another year. Okay. Let, us, let us continue our Discussion of All right, now that right there got everybody going back and forth arguing, but let's get through the conversation. This lady right here says, why is he only talking to women? Dudes say he said, don't be petty like dudes. He's talking to the WNBA community, LOL. She says, don't be petty like dudes. It's literally justifying men being haters when being a hater isn't gender based. Dude says, how do you hear what he says and come to that conclusion? He says, she's a woman. <laughs> Y'all crazy, bro. So Janae from ESPN responded to this person saying, good, they need to. She's done wonders for the WNBA. Remember, they have been losing money for years. She's a big part of what is turning that around. They should be thankful. Instead, they are hating and showing how jealous they are. Now, Janae responds saying, technically, the revenue started um, increasing back in 2019. And in a span of four years, it went from $60 million to over $200 million on a billion dollar evaluation. Person says, I haven't seen a single black athlete currently playing or retired defending Angel Reese like this at any point. Bro, what? Thank God for receipts. Homie put um Shaq literally last year, and plus she hasn't gotten hate since she got drafted as well. So this person says, well, the fucking idiot. And Shaq says, shut your dumb ass up and leave Angel Reese alone. Homie says nobody is hating on Caitlin Clark. This lazy narrative simply isn't true. What people have been doing is, res is respecting all the legends of the game, including black women who are currently in the WNBA and came before her. No need to disrespect the growth of the league before Caitlin. So WNBA player Jonquel Jones, she plays for the New York Liberty. She says, interested to know who are all the women that are hating on CC. I'm seeing a lot of coverage about it, but I don't see the hate. I'm also not a big comment reader, so I might have missed it. They say they said DJ Nate guarded her too hard. It, it was unfair to her. Basketball fans said this. Um, I don't think so. I think, you know, they pushing it too far, bro. The kid go, he says, damn, bro. Now the Caitlin Clark hate mob are going to call you a coon and say that you hate black women. I can hear the think pieces being typed out. 
They will say people are saying WNBA is more than just CC. It's not hatred for CC. She's bringing new eyes, but the league was already growing before her arrival. Continued growth will rely on promoting the collective star talent and not one player. I agree with that for sure, for sure. And it comes like, you know, I think, I can't remember who said it, but they said it perfectly. You gotta hype them up in the promo for the game, as you're saying, like Caitlin Clark going against the Connecticut Suns with a, Alyssa Thomas, a triple double machine, or the best defense in the league. You gotta hype up the other teams to make it sound bigger. Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever takes on lockdown perimeter defender DJ Carrington. You gotta hype up the other teams to make it all sound like a damn movie about to happen, bro. In the Avengers or Guardians of the Galaxy, we knew about the superheroes, but when you hear how they talk about Thanos, it's like, oh shit. That motherfucker might be the real deal that's about to come and get us type shit. So then you grow a respect for the other people and understand how hard it is for Caitlin Clark to get through those challenges. And you look at a game from a different perspective when you realize, okay, the players she got to go against are good as fuck. All right, so in response to Chuck, they saying they're literally just playing basketball against her. That's what I think too. I understand both perspectives. It's the people online that's the really ones that's going, going wild. This narrative is already tired. Wrap it up, please. This is Michaela. She plays for the Chicago Sky. And Dierica Hamby saying, seriously, what the funk are you talking about? She plays for the Los Angeles Sparks. Khalid Cooper, who's a goddamn baller, she been dropping 30 balls back to back, says, um, y'all be saying anything, man. Now, homie says this in response to LeBron saying he better chill before a bunch of septic ring piercing and afros. Raiders mentions claiming he hates black women. That would be insane, dog. But I'm going to show y'all something. Hold on real quick. Real, real quick. The dude said this right here. Has Braun ever stuck his neck out for his little sis, Aja Wilson, publicly like he did for Cece? Genuine question. So people started sharing some instances. I for sure shared one. Um, I put, yes, his IG post after she won a ship last year. So they say, sis, the true signature shoe coming. I mean, what we talking about? Congrats, Aja Wilson. This is um after she won a championship. People responded to what I'm saying. There was a big controversy just recently before it was announced that Aja Wilson was getting her signature shoe after Caitlin Clark's signature shoe was being announced. People was like, wait, the best player in the league doesn't have a signature shoe? What the fuck going on? So everyone was going crazy on the timeline about it. But LeBron was already speaking on it. Like I said, this was back in October when they won the championship. So this dude right here responds to what I'm saying. Saying congratulations is not sticking your neck out for someone. Nice try. This lady right here says, is Asia getting the microscopic treatment CC getting? I'm not sure what's sticking in your neck out for Asia. She been Gucci. Most people defending my post. Homie says, what has happened to her where he would need to stick his neck out? You can't stick your neck out if they are being attacked on a daily basis. And someone also shared this right here from um, the ESPYs. Congratulations to my sister, Asia Wilson, on winning the WNBA Best Player ESPY. And y'all make sure y'all get out there and support those beautiful women and what they do. That's why he's accepting his award. He's showing love to Asia. Biggest basketball player in the world is using his platform to shout out the biggest WNBA player in the world. The best one, I believe. Now, Shanae says some more things. Let's get to it. So she says, Charles and inside the NBA are the ghosts of this industry. So respectfully, I'll offer my perspective with love. Every WNBA player I know supports this rookie class and are grateful for the spotlight and money that Caitlin Clark and Jarese are in co are bringing to the W. I agree with that. I'm seeing more so the outside chatter, not the WNBA players, other than like down to Rossi and stuff like that. But it's no different than, than what Paul George and Draymond Green was saying about Wimby on podcast P before Wimby came into the league. Paul George and Draymond Green was saying he's not gonna be able to do all that dribbling shit that he be doing when he comes to the league. Wimby obviously went first this draft. F***ing phenom, 7-5. Talk to me, how, like, how would you guard him? Cause I'm, I tell people like, He's elite, <laughs> hell of a talent. But some of the shit that I've seen, he's not, we're not letting him do that I'm in sorry, the NBA. But you're not just dribbling through me like the Harlem. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I saw some of that. You're like, don't get me wrong. Like you said, he a phenom. But some of the stuff is just like, I mean. <laughs> Come on, bro. Yeah. Like, I think I'm a good player. <laughs> like, and, and special, special <laughs> talent. Like, to even be able to do some of the stuff he was doing, like, it takes a very special at that size. Right. Very special talent. But, like, you got to press up into him. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't let him get comfortable. Mm -hmm. If you let him get comfortable, you lose mm -hmm. because you're not blocking his shot. He may not even see your contest. Like right. he's seven five, <laughs> right. and he shoot the ball up here. Right. He may not even see your contest. So you have to with a guy like that. I feel you got to do your work, Crowdy. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm crowding him from the time he start running up and down the court. When they get the rebound and they start coming, I'm crowding him. Yeah. Because I can't let him get to a space right. where he's comfortable, where he's going to get to that space that's over. and do what he want to do. You you can't. That's what they said. Things have changed since he came into the league, though, but that's what they were saying. Opportunities right. to watch I, him. I take back everything I said. <laughs> he looked good, bro. I, Chico. And, I, and I knew he was going to be successful in the league, but I thought it was going to be tougher than what he's making it look right now. Not to continue with Sinead's thread, she says there are two key incidents where CC was criticized. Cheryl Swoops was wrong on major factors and she apologized to her privately. I think Angel will eventually be a good pro. I don't think Angel will come into the league immediately and dominate the way people think she will. And I say that for people who have never watched a WNBA game. It's good, like there's talent. Like these women can play. And because there are very few roster spots, like it's a real job. So people look at new players coming in, whether that's out of college, players who've been overseas, and they look at that and say, oh, you trying to come take my job. Like, no, nah, it's not going to be that easy. So will Caitlin Clark be a good pro? Absolutely. Will Caitlin Clark come into the WNBA and do what she's doing right now. Immediately, absolutely not. Not gonna happen. Okay. Diana Taurasi pointed out that all rookies struggle in the W and no one is immune. It wasn't hate, it was Diana being Diana. If you know, you know. Draymond being Draymond as I'm trying to compare the things to y'all, all right? And you said that Caitlin is gonna go through a learning curve. Mm -hmm. Some people were critical of you for saying that, but I don't know that yeah. it necessarily meant that you're not welcoming to her, right? I mean, how, how, how do you, I mean, it seems like you were just saying the reality is she's going to have a learning curve. Uh, yeah, you know, it's the new fans are really sensitive these days. You can't say anything. Uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of like when you go from kindergarten to first grade, there's a learning adjustment. When you go from high school to college, there's a learning adjustment. You know, I, I, I don't think I said anything that wasn't factually correct. and. Like anything, greatness is going to translate, and uh, she's proven that in every level. And I don't see it being any different in the WNBA. So she says also, charter flights were actually first deployed last year during the W postseason because one, safety with increasing numbers of star players, two, revenue trends are starting to support it. W has quickly gone from 60 million in 2019 to over 200 million in 2023 on a billion dollar valuation. He says three, ever since teams got in trouble last year for trying to find workarounds for charters, this was likely in the plans for this uh, for this year, especially as owners and players presented a united front. Our amazing commission is very methodical. The right things happen, but not overnight. Expansion has also been in the works for the past few years, but again, slow and steady wins the race. I used to get mad at the NWSL because they move away, they move way faster than us. We desperately need more teams and roster spots, but more importantly, we need the right owners to sustain to sustain. All of this was the perfect storm for women's basketball. The W is rooting for Caitlin and the rising generation because when they win, we win. Rising tide lifts our boats. But these women are pros and also have a job to do. This will bring out the best in them. Just keep watching. Now to continue. I think if LeBron hears that, he'll take that in like, okay, let me look into that. And that's cool. But what he's saying is not that far-fetched from what he's going on. It's not in particular the players that much from what I'm saying outside of what Diana said or Cheryl Swoop, who, who, who. it's the online chatter as you have Caitlin Clark's fans going hard and going against um, anybody that they think of. it don't even have to be goddamn ops I was showing love to Angel Reese first game and, and um, giving criticism saying what I like what I didn't like and a random Caitlin Clark fan said you're only doing this because she's black type shit I'm like bro I didn't even say nothing about Caitlin Clark you have no idea about my evaluation of her performance well, so why are you coming to project racism onto my conversation I'm having over here talking about just specifically Angel Reese's game. That's what's going on because many people, they can't open their minds up to viewing women's basketball outside of just that one player. Me, myself, personally, I'm excited as I'm learning more of the athletes that's out there. Like a brand new series for me, brand new characters I'm popping up and learning about. So it's dope to me, but the Caitlin Clark fans, they are annoying. I can't lie, they are annoying. And what that does is it excite the Caitlin Clark haters because it's just natural competition on the timeline. And like I told y'all earlier, 
if people start to cherry pick points to go ahead and win the argument, win the battle between the two. And I'm like, what the fuck is y'all doing, man? It's crazy. It's goddamn crazy. My boy, she, she Wallace spoke and he said, man, you feel sorry for Caitlin Clark because of the pressure that's on her. Similar to what LeBron was talking about, bro. Athletes all around understand it, but check out to see what he got to say. And, and I, I kind of sort of feel bad for it, like, like you just mentioned. Um, you know, that's the end of my personal life. Yeah. You know, and like, like she has so much pressure on her. I don't know. It was a quick clip I saw when, um, uh, I think it might have been uh, with the first game. I think uh, y'all played in Connecticut. In Connecticut, yeah. And they show it was a quick clip that uh, one of the ladies had from that team had put out there, and you know it showed Kaylin Clark sitting up there in the front, and you know she was just like uh, sitting by herself on the phone. Didn't show all the other ladies on the team. You know they back there like, hey, thanks, Kaylin, and yeah. all that. Like you know, like at times like that, I'm pretty sure like. Yeah, it's good, and I'm glad that, you know, they are starting to charter um, mm -hmm, planes yeah. for WNBA teams, but I, I hate that they putting all that pressure on on that young lady. She like gotta that. be like, feeling it, right? Yeah, yeah, you gotta feel that shit. It's like, you know, she she can't do, she, she can't be normal. Yeah. Like, all, all them days of her normalcy is over, you know, going to the market, like uh, out there, she can't do eat. that. Yeah. Like, like you know, she she's on that pedestal now. Where, as you said, on every uh, sporting news cover, television commercials, you know, phone commercials and cereal, all that shit. She's everywhere, um, which is a great thing, you know, for her as far as her career wise. But man, I can't I can't imagine, you know, like how she's feeling inside sometimes. You know, just wanting some, just some of that personal time, just to be. Uh, uh, I just want to play basketball, you yeah. know, have that attitude about rookie. it. Like, yeah, rookie. I don't want to yeah. fuck this, uh, this photo shoot. And mm -hmm. now I got to go run over here and do this appearance. All right. Now, at the end of the day, for Caitlin Clark to get better, she got to continue to go through the storm, dog. You got to go through the storm. In my opinion, you can't watch and see the girl not fucking talented. You know, I just can't see that. She, she has a crazy back. Other night I seen a chick coming downhill on the fast bait, put that bitch behind the back, then do a goddamn step back, and then drill the goddamn three. Like, she had a nasty bag, bro. So I don't understand how people don't understand the talent, but at the same damn time, it's other people that are talented in the league as well. So I just think it should be a great opportunity for like the WNBA core fans that's been here for years to accept the conversation because ain't nobody been talking about the WNBA this much, but I understand as well how annoying that shit can be with people having these weird ass narratives instead of just understanding that she's a dog she's coming in to the league but there's gonna be some other dogs that she she gotta get through she gotta get through this, this shit is just wild man but y'all gotta let me know what y'all gotta say in the comment section below me i'm gonna go ahead and get about it here though this has been another update with stace yo